Welcome back! Last time I unboxed the Atari 800XL computer and gave a quick rundown of the computer itself from the outside. I pointed out each of the items on the back panel, but conspicuously skipped this red switch. Today I'll show you why. The best way to do that is to show you the insides of the computer, so let's take it apart. There's normally six screws holding the case together. This particular unit is missing the two along the front, at the top in this view, so I only have to remove the four in the corners. When opening this model, be very careful of the keyboard connector, which is on the right. Lift the top, including the keyboard, gently up and to the right. The first thing to notice is the metal shielding surrounding all of the innards. This is one of the major differences between the original 800 and the newer 800XL. Both models include an output that goes straight to a television. When the 800 was designed, regulations surrounding interference in the TV band were very strict. By the time the XL line was designed, these were relaxed, so much thinner, lighter, and smaller shielding was required. As I remove it, you can see that this is just a thin sheet of metal. With the shielding off, we can see something clearly. This unit has seen aftermarket modifications. Look at the rat's nest of wires connecting the two separate aftermarket parts one labeled Omniview in blue handwritten ink, the other with the name Rambo XL silkscreened on the PCB. The Omniview chip is hooked up to the mysterious red switch. It's resting on top of the default operating system ROM. The red switch toggles which of the two chips, both hooked up, is enabled. Directly above this is the basic ROM. This is included by default in the 800XL, another of the changes from the earlier 800 model, which required a cartridge to be inserted to run BASIC. The Rambo XL, on the other hand, is a memory expansion. The eight smaller chips directly to the left of this add-in board are each 8K in a stock machine, for 64K total. With this upgrade, they're replaced with 32K chips for a total of 256K. The add-in board allows the system to control them via bank switching, using the same technique officially added in the Atari 130XE computer, released two years after the 800XL first was. Also of note is this relatively anonymous chip near the front middle. This is Sally, a custom Moz 6502 chip. The 6502 was a very famous chip. Of course, it powered this line of Atari computers, which were in production from 1977 through 1992. That's 15 years with the same 1.7 MHz processor the whole time. It also was at the heart of the Apple IIe, the Atari 2600, the Commodore 64, and the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and one famous cartoon robot to boot. I personally find the construction fascinating for a personal computer. Virtually all of the chips are socketed. Absolutely all of the components are through-hole, and also discrete. Look at all those rows of resistors clustered around the chips and near the interfaces. Tune in next time and I'll turn the computer on again, and this time I'll flip that red switch, demoing the features of that OmniView chip. See you then!